Have you ever got home from an amazing photo trip, put the raw files in the computer, pulled them up, and just been completely discouraged, and you pretty much never want to touch those files again? Well, you're definitely not alone. It's a very common thing that can happen to us landscape photographers. So in this video today, I wanna to give you a very simple yet highly effective workflow. There's only a handful of things that I use in my workflow and I have been doing this type of approach to my editing for years. And it doesn't matter if you're using Lightroom or Photoshop. All right, let's take a look. I've pulled up a raw file. This was from a recent camping trip with my son. This type of file is almost as hard as it gets because we've got a completely backlit scene. We've got the sunrise just beginning to happen behind the mountain range here, which means 80% of the file is just dark shadows and midtones. These are tricky because we've got to basically develop the details ourselves manually here in the computer. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, what am I trying to do to the image? The goal for this one is to reveal the details in those dark areas, add some color to the frame because a lot of the color is lost right now. Obviously it's a raw file. And I wanna lead the eye effectively through the frame to finish up on our mountains because that's the whole point of the composition. So let's do just that. The first thing I'd like to do is go over to the color profile and I change that to landscape. Straight away, it just lifts some of the dark tones. I'll turn that on and off. And it also gives our colors a bit more vibrance, all right? First and foremost. The next thing I'm gonna do now is open up the basic tab. Again, it doesn't matter if you're in Lightroom here or Photoshop, very similar. Um, this is in Adobe Camera Raw, which is in Photoshop. We're gonna grab the temperature slider. I just wanna cool this down. I just feel like it's got a lot of subtle blue tones in the fog. Cooling that down is gonna bring those out. It's subjective, but I think it's gonna look nicer, cooler. And then I'm gonna warm up those highlights up in the sky for a beautiful contrast of cool and warm. So globally, just cooling everything down. The tint, yeah, pretty happy with where that's at, that's fine. Now, running down, we're very dark, aren't we? I'm gonna actually bring up the exposure. If you look at my histogram, you should see that I've shot this to basically protect the highlights let the shadows fall where they did. I'm gonna bring exposure up though. It's that way everything will get raised evenly so it looks more natural. Then for our sky, we'll fix that in a moment, but at least everything else in that lower portion is just getting lifted all evenly, the mids as well as the shadows. Now, to recover some of the sky, we can do it some of the highlights. If you go overboard on recovering highlights, you gotta keep in mind that you're actually recovering that globally. So all the little subtle detail, highlight details in the mids and the, the shadow areas, like in the foreground, you, you're subduing those. And I don't really wanna do that. That's how we get nice depth and separation through the frame. So I'm gonna recover the highlights partially, but not too much. When it comes to the shadows, definitely wanna pull those up a bit go easy on raising the shadows up because you don't want that foreground to get overly bright because the eye will then stop there. You wanna keep the eye flowing to the background. It's natural to have dark tones, especially on the edge of the frame and in the foreground. So we'll leave that maybe about here, say 40. It doesn't really matter what the number is, it matters what it looks like. I'm gonna leave the whites and blacks. If we look at our histogram, We've got a lot of whites, a lot of highlights. We've got a lot of shadows down here. I don't really need to work on them just yet at all. Lastly, the vibrance and saturation. So again, this is global. When we increase these, it's applying to the whole image, every single area. I'm gonna increase the vibrance and that's working on your midtones, the whites and the blacks. The saturation works on the shadows and highlights. That's why I'll often, on a scene like this, you'll find you wanna go easy on the saturation because there's already a lot of saturation in those highlights and shadows because they're so deep. Now, that's it for the, the overall basic adjustments, global adjustments, working on the whole file. Let's go in now and work locally. And this is where we're really gonna make up a lot of ground. That sky, it's just too bright, isn't it? One, it's got no color in it. It should have some nice warm hues there. Also, it's so bright that it's kind of pulling the eye away from the mountains, the main subject matter in the middle. There's a few ways we can darken this down. I just wanna show you the main tool that I like to use, my favorite tool. If you click the masking button, it's called the brush, the adjustment brush, or you can push K, which is what I'll do moving forward. I like to set the brush to a high feather. This means it's soft. So when I click, 
the inner circle gets 100% of the adjustment and then it gradates out to, to zero. That way if I decide to use the edge, edge of the brush, I'm gently applying whatever my adjustment is and it's very easy and organic to see the results take place in real time. So for that sky, I'm gonna bring the exposure down and some highlights. I'm guessing the numbers. I come up and just use the edge of the brush. I'm not concerned about hitting the mountains or the cloud because again, I'm using the edge of the brush. Sometimes I'll even zoom out like this. And now it's a very gentle and subtle adjustment. Now, if I choose to, I could come down and further tweak whatever the, the application was. I don't like to brush first um, because you're just guessing then. I'd rather put some of the adjustment on the, the brush itself and then watch in real time the result and then tweak accordingly. Some of you might be saying, but there's a sky selection. Let's do that. <laughs> Look what it's done. It's selected all the mountain. It can't differentiate between the fog, the mountain and the sky because the tonal range there is all too similar. I'm gonna push Command Z to undo. I never use that. Don't bother using it. It's never gonna be accurate enough. Sometimes it'd be too accurate or it won't look normal. I love to use the brush. The other way I like to use the brush is, I'm gonna push K, I use it for everything. This is the main tool that I use. Um, the details in the rest of the scene, I love to lift the white. White is light. If you can have light, any, see light anywhere, like on these foreground plants, lifting the whites is a really subtle but effective way to bring those details out, even in, look at that, all that fog there for the gentle light. It's just like dodging, dodging and burning, right? Lightning and darkening. So watch as we increase the lights. See what that's doing? If you did exposure, bang, obviously it's just doesn't look right because you're doing every tone. If we do the whites only, it's only doing those gentle tones with light on them. So let's do that about there. The other way you can use the brush is Anything close to the viewer should have the appearance of more detail. So sometimes I might increase the texture and only apply that right in the foreground. The other thing I'll sometimes do, I've pushed K for a new one, is the, the level of darkness in the distance should always be less than the foreground. So the shadows, for example, you can see the foreground has dark shadows, great. Then naturally, this is already happening. This is what happens in nature, atmospheric perspective that the, there's no such thing as black by the time we get far off in the distance. This is accentuated on a morning like this where we've got the fog in the atmosphere. That's why it's perfect because it, it creates a sense of depth. But sometimes on the brush, I'll further enhance that by bringing up blacks and shadows and anything further away, whatever's in that furthest plane, I will lift those shadows and blacks. I'll even sometimes rehaze. So down to the dehaze, I go left and rehaze, it does a very similar thing. It's lifting the mid-tone darks to make them brighter. Let's talk about color. We've already worked globally on the temperature and tint, the vibrates and saturation. Let's work locally with color through the color grading. Warming the highlights first and foremost is gonna really help our sky here. We've got a beautiful, cool, subtle color palette going on. I just wanna introduce a very subtle um, warmth to the sky. The way the color grading works is these wheels here, it shows our tones, mids, shadows, and highlights. The outer circle that I'm spinning around is the hue that we'd like to apply. So I wanna apply a warm hue, I'm gonna throw it around there. To apply the saturation now, we move the inner circle towards the outer circle. I'm holding shift and we get that black line and that means I can't slip off that hue. And now, look what it's doing to the image. Can you see what's going on there? So the highlights are getting warmer. So I'm gonna just dial that a bit more into the oranges, like so. I'm gonna keep it subtle. I don't wanna warm up, because there's highlights on that fog, and if I go too heavy, see we're just getting unnaturally warm back there. I wanna keep this fog area still blue. So I might run down into the mid-tones and see if we can just add some blue in there, just a small amount, like so. And turn that on and off. That's before, that's after. It's subtle, right? That's the point of processing. Let's keep it subtle. Let me show you another way we can work on the sky um, tonality. Push K for a brush. I'm gonna run down and I'm gonna put some yellow and magenta on the brush. 
and now I'm just going to hit just this area here all through the center get a little bit smaller on the brush as we run along to the left hand side it's all right for that light to just slowly creep over and warm the top of that fog just gently even this beautiful cloud up here like so another thing that I'm going to show you is to draw the eye through the scene it's always nice to just have remember whatever is brightest will get attention that's where the eye is going to flow to at the moment it's brightest behind the mountains there that's great it's all backlit it's drawing the eye in sometimes I'll emphasize that I might just do a small amount of exposure small amount of yellow but the key really is the rehaze and this just gives the illusion of light it's pretty much happening naturally in this file anyway it's just the, the way the timing of the image but just enhancing that light cresting over Let, watch the rehaze see that the rehaze look at the histogram it's just lifting those mid-tones a little bit brighter it's creating the illusion of light being there and like I said we'll just do a small amount of exposure as well I'm kind of tempted to do it over this side just running along like so a soft glow drawing the eye in through the frame the last thing I'll show you with the brush is working on the curves so you can actually do curves locally on the edge of the brush I'm gonna lift it's like when I lift the whites but I'm also gonna this is mid-tone contrast gonna make the darks come down this is great for anything close to the viewer the mid-tone contrast darks get a little bit darker see and then the brights get a little bit brighter that way we're still maintaining that nice tonal separation through the frame let's do it before and after huge difference the main thing that's jumping out at me when i do this is i'm just noticing the left hand fog which naturally was a lot cooler but it's very blue now so on the brush another brush i'm going to actually warm it up and also desaturate and just hit that left hand side just so it wasn't so blue just didn't look right lucky last i'm just going to go a bit more dramatic on the sky large brush bring down the exposure and just really darken that down and that now makes the light source towards the center stand out even more command zero go back to full screen this is where i would let this sit now come back tomorrow come back in a few days with fresh eyes it's what i call the marination phase i'll do this with all my images they just sit in a draft folder and then you'll be surprised when you come back and look with those fresh eyes you'll just be able to spot a few things that you probably didn't see on the first pass and I'd like to do at least two to three passes um, but for now in the sake of the tutorial this is pretty close to being in the realm of finished any other adjustments I make might be just a bit more saturation maybe less saturation anything like that but before after if you like this teaching style and this workflow and you want to follow along with a series of raw files just check out the link below for a longer course that i've put together on post processing otherwise thank you for viewing the video here if you have any questions at all just let me know but this workflow this approach of leading from dark to light um, creating that tonal separation and color separation it's what i do to all my images like i said there's no need to download any plugins or panels anything like that it doesn't matter if you're using lightroom or like me here in photoshop in acr it's all the same and this type of scene as i mentioned at the beginning it's really as hard as it gets when you've got all those shadow tones so if you can maintain that sense of depth and separation on an image like that then just about any scene you'll be able to approach using those exact same tools there. Thank you for checking out the video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.